Welcome to Chalk Talk with 70sBig.com. Today's topic is on joint approximation, which is an aspect of mobility that I find very beneficial and often underutilized. So what is joint approximation? It's when the joints are manipulated in a particular direction to put that joint in its optimal position or restore its, its uh, efficient positioning and what it can do is facilitate stretching and that's how we're going to use it. So when you're sitting down, when you're sitting down a lot, um, you, uh, you, you have a lot of anterior forces in the hips. So this is kind of a, and yes I'm wearing uh, spandex. Uh, so when you when you sit down a lot, and this is a unique uh, style of sitting because my my feet are unsupported. So in this case, the weight of my leg is pulling down, and so if you look at this thigh or this femur as a lever, this is pulling down, and so what normally happens is that the other end goes up, and then that that this proximal end right here is stopped by the actual socket of the hip and everything. But this is an anterior stress in the hip, and we also have shortened uh, hip flexors here. Uh, the psoas and the rectus femoris are, are shortened. So that's just some of the stuff that's going on when you're sitting down a lot. And uh, so oftentimes to improve back pain and just general junkiness, you start with the anterior and the lateral hips. So today we're focusing on the anterior. So because when you're sitting down, there's a lot of anterior force because it's pushing your proximal femur up, we're gonna use posterior joint distraction. Uh, in other words, we're gonna use joint approximation and the posterior distraction uh, direction with the hip uh, to stretch it out and improve it and this can be done prior to training it can be done after training and just be done as part of your normal mobility uh, uh, routine but I've been using this and having people do this uh, prior to training and it is even better than just couch stretching because it's actually manipulating the joint to facilitate position so um, to, to review so far improve joint position augment stretching and uh, where you got sitting causes the anterior forces so Probably seen something like this before, but I'm going to add a few little, uh, a few little uh, modifications as we get going. So um, attach it to something that is going to be about hip height when you're uh, when you're actually kneeling, and go ahead and get on that knee. And the key to doing anything in which you're going to stretch the hip flexors is having your lower half tight in good trunk position, which is just should be the key, the case for everything you do, and then also this right glute being contracted, nice and solid because the right glute being contracted puts you in hip extension and then the lower abs being contracted prevents you from having an anterior pelvic tilt which is not actually going to stretch anything it's just going to shorten the psoas because you're bringing your lumbar spine down if that doesn't make sense don't worry about it we'll talk about it later so lower abs tight glutes tight good trunk position i'm actually getting a stretch on my uh, hip flexor right now with this posterior distraction and now we're going to add in some things um, so we're going to have Turn, sink, push. Turn, sink, push is what you're going to remember to utilize in this posterior distraction. So the turning is just a nice and easy back and forth, and you'll find that one direction in particular has a nice little stretch. I just grab the band. Uh, this, it's when you turn opposite from the leg that's down, that the leg that's banded, you get a little bit of a stretch. So it's a nice and easy turn, and I like to do reps when I do mobility stuff because just sitting there for a length of time is just kind of. Uh, traumatic and people hate it because it reminds them of normal stretching so I like to do reps because then it's like an exercise so I'll do five here and then so turn sink push the sink is going to be locked down here contracted uh, glute and then you're going to sink forward like you're dropping your your junk to the floor or your hoo-ha you're just dropping that to the floor so make sure that this this particular leg is out far enough where it can facilitate sinking down and I do five reps here lastly the push is going to be, I like to put the arms over the head, you don't actually have to, but if you imagine everything from the hip to the tip of your fingers being one straight line, and you sink, or I'm sorry, you push your hips forward, you imagine that from your hip up is a straight line, so you're actually doing this with your body by putting, pushing your junk and your hua forward instead of down. So we're kind of just pushing the hips forward and rocking it back, so we're getting more extension in the hip with posterior distraction, that's something that helps open it up. Um, so if you remember uh, turn, sink, push, then you're gonna be pretty good. So you can do those same things by getting up and posting up 
with the knee off the ground, and I like doing this afterwards, this is kind of like a jerk position, right? And you can get internally rotated a little more like a normal jerk position if you want, but you can hit turn sink push like this, or just have the sink portion. And uh, if you have that, that pain underneath your patella when you're doing certain things, particularly this, this lunge position or this jerk position, this posture distraction is gonna free up that pain and it's gonna provide uh, a stretch and stuff that alleviates the pain in the knee. So when you have pain at the knee, always look to the hip to find what's going on. So to review, push your hip distraction. If you remember turn, sink, push, turn, sink, push, then you're not, you're not gonna forget uh, how to actually work this. So instead of just hanging out there and just counting two minutes, actually have some, Go after some reps in different positions. Remember, I was on, I was on my knee, and then I came up, and I did five reps on each one of these things. So, <clears throat> if you have a plan of mobility, and you have kind of like a specific thing you're going to do instead of just hanging out in a, a god awful position for X amount of time, then it's going to be a little more effective for you. So, to review, you can improve the joint position with joint with joint approximation, and that posterior distraction is a method of joint approximation. And it can augment stretching, which we'll find with various uh, exercises as we do more chalk talks. And then uh, the sitting causes the anterior force, so we're going to use posterior distraction, or other words, pulling back. So that's all I have for today. Bye.